Hey calculus class, today you're going to learn topic 43, volumes of solids with known cross sections. Alright, so let's first um, do a little quick review of what cross sections are. So when you have a 3D object, you can slice the object either vertically or horizontally to get a cross section of the object. So for example, here would be us slicing a pyramid vertically and then horizontally. And you'll notice that here, your cross sections are 2D equilateral triangles. And here, your cross sections are 2D squares. So now let's see what happens if we put this solid onto a coordinate graph. So bear with me. I am trying to help you visualize this as best as possible, because these are not easy to draw by hand. So we will turn the pyramid onto its side and cut it perpendicular to the x-axis infinite times. This will recreate blank types of cross sections. So <clears throat> here is what this visually would look like. So I took the pyramid and I flipped it onto its side and cut it infinitely number of times vertically. So the across, uh, perpendicular to the x-axis. And you should notice that your cross sections become squares. Now, if we just looked at the base and a single cross, cross section, then we can see something that looks like this. So this is just the base right? and only one cross section. And we can see that the base is made up of two functions, a top function and a bottom function, because here's the x-axis and this is the y-axis, and then the 3D is your z-axis. Now the cross-section is perpendicular to the x-axis, so this should start sounding familiar from what we did yesterday. And the cross-section is a very thin rectangular prism, or a square. And it is possible to calculate the volume of a single cross-section. And that's what we're going to be doing we're going to calculate the volume of a single cross section. So here is our model. Okay. So <clears throat> we want the volume of any geometric shape, which we know is the area of the base times the height. Now the height in this case is represented by our change in X or the thickness of a cross section. So that part is, since we're cutting an infinitely number of times into infinitely number of cross sections, um, this change of X is gonna be irrelevant eventually. Now we need the area of the base, which will be some 2D geometric shape. And so what will help you do that is the bird's eye view. So if I was to look at this figure from the top down, I would be seeing something that looks like this. So there's the base of my pyramid, and here is the bottom of the square. So this part right here is this piece on my 3D model. So this gives a 2D perspective of the cross section, and this resembles finding the area between two curves. So as you notice here, it appears that you have a rectangle, between two curves. So the definition of the volume of a solid with known cross sections. So first we're going to let S be a solid that lies between X equals A and X equals B. If the cross section is known and perpendicular to the X axis, then the volume of S is represented by the integral from A to B of the area of the base or the area of the uh, cross section times dx which is your change of x so that gives you your volume area of the base times the height of your solid <clears throat> so like i said area of the base and we're gonna the second part is what if you're going perpendicular to the y-axis so it's pretty much the same idea it's just your cross section now in a bird's eye view is going to have a horizontal rectangle 
So this time it's going to be in terms of y and going from c to d. So possible 2D cross-sections that you're going to need to know the areas, um, the area formulas for. So squares, which we know is just sides squared. Rectangles, length times width. Semicircles, pi r squared divided by 2. Quarter circles, pi r squared divided by 4. Right isosceles triangles. Area equals base squared over 2. And equal lateral triangles, which is the square root of 3, base squared all over 4. And these formulas should all come from your geometry class. And you do need to know these. These won't be given to you on the AP test. All right, so let's look at an example. <clears throat> so let's say we have the base of a solid is bounded by the graphs of y equals 1 half x minus 1, y equals negative 1 half x plus 1, x equals 0, and x equals 2. <clears throat> Find the volume of the solid if every cross section is perpendicular to the x axis and are squares. So <clears throat> this actually is our pyramid example. <clears throat> so the change of x is just your dx. So what I really need in, in order to integrate is the area of the cross section. Well, the cross section is a square. Well, we know that the area of a square is side squared. So one side of this square, as you'll notice, is just this length of this rectangle or the height of this rectangle. So your top curve minus your bottom curve. So what we were doing yesterday. So <clears throat> I want to integrate that side squared. So to figure out what one side length is, I am going to do <clears throat> top minus bottom. So I need to know which curve is top and which curve is bottom. And since these functions are pretty nice, they're the linears, so your top curve is your negative 1 half x plus 1, your bottom curve is 1 half x minus 1. So now that gives me <clears throat> my side length, so top curve minus bottom curve, and then since the area of the square is you have to square the side length, I'm going to square this. So this is what I'm going to integrate. So I'm going to go ahead and do some simplifying. So distributing the negative, combining like terms. Then I can go ahead and multiply this out because I have a square. And now I can go ahead and integrate. And then evaluate from 0 to 2. And then simplify. So the volume of that pyramid is 8 thirds. All right, <clears throat> why don't you go ahead and see if you can try this one on your own. All right, so we have a base of a solid that is bounded by the graphs of x squared, a minus x squared, negative 2, and 2. And these really are to help you with your boundaries. <clears throat> so we want to find the volume of the solid if every cross section is perpendicular to the x-axis and are semicircles. So visually, that's what this is going to look like. So you have your graph, so here's your base, right, bounded by the x squared and the 8 minus x squared. <clears throat> and then since those two functions intersect at negative 2 to 2, that's where your limits are for your integration. <clears throat> now here, here is one cross section, a semicircle. So we need the area of this semicircle. Well, we know that the area of a semicircle is pi r squared divided by 2. And when you look at this semicircle sitting between these two curves, you'll see that its diameter is represented by the height of the rectangle. So to get the radius, we need to find the diameter first and then divide that by 2. So <clears throat> I'm going to do top minus bottom to get my diameter, and then I'm going to divide it by 2. So my top curve is the 8 minus x squared. My bottom curve is the x squared. So here is my diameter. To get the radius, I divide it by 2. And then I plug it in to my pi r squared over 2 
formula, and I'm going to integrate that from negative 2 to 2. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this radius a little bit more. So what I did, <clears throat> just so you are aware, is I took this pi over 2 and brought it on outside because it's just a constant. And then when I simplified this top and I was able to distribute the power of 2 through, so that's where I got the 4 on the bottom. Then I can bring out that 4 and combine it with the pi over 2 to get pi over 8 out on top. Expand this. And then I can go ahead and integrate. And then evaluate. And I would get the following. <clears throat> All right, so in class tomorrow, we will look at some more examples um, visually, but um, this actually, what we're doing in this topic will help you prepare for your um, second semester um, final, which is an actual project. And it will look, here are some old projects that you might have seen before um, laying around in my room. And here you got Mr. Peanut. And Mr. Peanut was made with semicircle cross sections that were perpendicular to the y axis. Here you have um, these are equilateral triangles, and they were made perpendicular to the x axis. And this is a shark's tail, or fin, sorry. And then here you have a bird made with cr semicircle cross sections that were perpendicular to the x axis as well. So um, I hope you enjoyed this topic so far, and I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night.